G'day GDL peoples, welcome to another edition of Scripting Adventure. Today we're going to talk about creating different shaped holes within your prisms. So in a previous episode we talked about how to create multiple holes in a prism, but they are rectangular, nice and simple. This time we're going to talk about circular holes and we'll put in a diamond hole as well, just for the fun of it. And we'll talk about how to smooth those holes and the complications around the status codes and how they mess with your base prism. A handy toolbar to have open is your Edit GDL Library Parts toolbar. It's not necessary, but a lot of people like it. Make sure under your options, work environment, model rebuild options, your interrupt with error messages is turned on. That way you will get correct feedback when you have print statements in your object. And we'll open our help under help. Online resources from Archicad 27, GDL reference guide. That will open the reference guide in an online PDF viewer. You may prefer to download it and use your own PDF viewer like Adobe or Bluebeam. And the online help can be found at gdl.graphisoft.com and click on reference guide. Even with the new interface, you will still need these reference guides open. So let's open a new object. We can do that via this button here, new object, or under file, libraries and objects, new object. We'll restore down using this button up here. On a Mac, it is right click on the tab and select undock. Let's open our 3D script and let's just put in a simple prism. We'll do a circular prism. So that's prism, hit enter to use that and it will be two coordinate lines, ZZYZX height. We'll start at zero, zero coordinates and we'll make that our center, which is a status code of 900. And then we will want our radius to be A divided by two and full 360 degrees and 4,000. So what have I just done there? We have a look at our reference guide, 3D shapes, basic shapes under prism underscore. I've declared my number of parameters, the height of my prism, my X and Y coordinates for each of the points. And then the status codes is where you make this happen. And the status codes are under chapter seven, status codes, additional status codes is what we're after. And then right down the bottom, we're doing a full circle. And that is a status code of 4,000. And the syntax is radius 360 degrees, 4,000. So that's what I've done. So let's have a look at how that turns out. Excellent. You might say, excellent. What do you mean, excellent? It doesn't look anything like what we want. Well, we've got a circle there. What we're missing is the sides. And what that is, is a status code of 15. So I'll just plug in 15 here. There's our sides. I'll just change this to a dark pen set. Again, you might say, well, look at all these lines here. We don't want all those lines. Well, we'll smooth them out with a 64 modifier. There we go. So prism with two coordinate lines. We're setting the center point here, and then we're setting the radius here. Now to put a hole in this prism, normally you would put in a negative one coordinate line that is the same as your first coordinate line, but circular ones for some reason are different. So what we do is we just add in a comma here, and we use the same center point. We've already set the center point in the first line. We just change our radius. So it'll be A, let's go A divided by three, 360, 4,000. Oh, and we have three coordinate lines now. Excellent, there's our hole. You can see there are no sides, no contour lines. So we change that in the preceding coordinate line. So we put in our status code here of 15. There's our sides. And to get rid of those vertical lines, we just add in a smoothing modifier of 64. And there we go. So there is our prism. 
with a hole cut in it, smooth sides, three coordinate lines. Easy. And this is parametric. So if I'm going to change any of these values, so let's make a 2000. Let's shorten it up a bit. 350, go back to my 3D view. It's changed. Excellent. Well, that's great. Okay, so that's a circular hole in a circular prism. How do you do a circular hole in a square or rectangular prism? Well, let's have a look at that now. Let's comment out these. We'll start another prism. You know what? I'm just going to type it in. I know the syntax. I don't like the way that it fills out everything that I need. I don't need it all. So we'll just do a prism of four coordinate lines. Nice and easy. The cursor didn't jump around so much. So what have we done? We've started at zero, zero. We've gone across to our A coordinate, gone up to our A and B coordinate, gone back across to our zero B coordinate. This is in X and Y. And then that, because it's a prism, you can't leave it open. So it will automatically close off. What does that look like? Right. There we go, our prism. And we've covered it before. If you want to put it in a hole in this prism, we got to put it in a negative coordinate line, which duplicates your first coordinate line. And what that tells GDL, what that tells ArchiCAD is I've closed my contour. Now I want to draw a hole. So negative one. So using what we've learned just above with a circular hole, we will set our center point, which is the 900 status code. Let's have a look. So additional status codes, set center point, X coordinate, Y coordinate, and 900, which will set the center point of any subsequent arcs that you draw. So we go, our center point will be A divided by two, B divided by two, which will put it in the center of that prism. And that will be a center point of 900. Then we want to draw our full circle as a whole and we draw it using the radius. So the radius will be B, because in this case, B is the smaller dimension. B divided by two, and then we'll multiply that by, let's say, 0.75. 360 degrees, 4,000 status code to tell us we want a full circle. So now I have five, six, seven coordinate lines. We'll check our script, it's okay. What happens when I do that? Look at that. Excellent. That's really good. I've got my circular hole in my prism. And you will have noticed, of course, that it's got all of these vertical lines here. So to get rid of those, we go to the previous coordinate line and add our modifier. There we go. Gone. All right. So now we know how to put a circular hole in a circular prism. We know how to put a circular hole in a rectangular prism. How do we make this work in our object that has an unknown number of holes in our prism? Well, let's have a look. So here's the object we created a few episodes ago. A prism with an unknown number of holes in it. That's parametric. So if I stretch this, the holes will update to suit. And I can change the number of holes. And everything works the way it should but they're just nice neat rectangular holes what if we wanted to make a little circle where those were instead of having a full rectangular hole so let's have a look at that select the object and i can go Control shift o which is the same as clicking on this open object for mac users hover over it and pay attention to the shortcut key or i can come up to here file libraries and object open object open my 2D script, 3D script, my 3D view. So first things we need to add a selection parameter so that we can choose between rectangular holes and circular holes. In order to properly set up a selection parameter, we need to do three things. For you Germans in the audience, three things. First thing, create a parameter. So let's go all type, and this should be an integer, all type. So if I save that and have a look at my object, what do I get? All I get is a number that tells the user nothing. So we need to make that nice and easy for the user to understand. So in order to do that, we set up our 
selection criteria in our master script. So what we do is we create a couple of arrays. Let's go H type index, which is a dynamic array, H type description. So dim is the statement used to declare an array. H type index will be the numbers that I use that my GDL script will identify with. And the description is what the user will see. We need a counter as well. So HID equals one. We'll also set up some constants for our selection. So this will make sense in a minute, hopefully. <laughs> so we've got H type rectangular equals one. H type circular equals two. Down here, we'll start with our description. We'll go H type description, and it's the first entry of that HID, which is a one. And we'll say that equals rectangular tab colon so that I can enter multiple lines on the single line. And we'll say H type index HID equals H type rect. So now we've got the first instance of our description array has rectangular in it. The first cell of our H type index array has one in it. And then we will increment our counter. Now we can do our next line. Line up my colons. Right, so let's have a look at what is in that array. And that's where I can just use a simple print statement. I go H type description. And when I compile my script, it'll tell me what's in that array. I've got rectangular and circular. What's in my H type one and two? which is one and two. So if I was to change this to say five, check my script, one and five. So that's what's filling my array at the moment. So it's this constant here, which will be used in my whole type parameter, which is just an integer parameter. Now we go to our parameter script and I go values. It'll be a values two statement. My parameter name will be whole type. My numerical expression one will be H type index. So this is the number that it's looking for. And then my description one will be my description array. I don't need the rest. So let's see what happens now. When I click over here to my parameter dialog, what it's done in the background is exchanging out the number for my description. But Archicad is reading a number, and that's what's important here. So I can add new definitions to this list. So let's say, for example, I add in a diamond. There you go, my list has changed. I can shift this earlier and it's changed it in the user selection list, but it hasn't changed its base value. So I can muck around with this after deployment of my object, and it won't screw up the selection of placed instances. Right, so that was the easy part. Let's just go back to our 2D script, and we'll turn on our project two statement so that we can see what happens in our 3D script. So what's happening in our 3D script? We've got put statements, which put coordinates into the memory. We've got a get statement down here, which gets all of those coordinates out of memory and uses them in our prism statement here. We've got a loop here, which loops through the holes, number of holes in the X and Y, and puts the coordinates of each of those holes into memory so that we can use them in one hit, no matter what the user has selected as the number of holes. So what we need to do is in this part here, here. We need to exchange out those coordinates or different coordinates depending on what the user has selected, rectangular or circular. Now here's the other complication. At the moment our holes are wide and narrow. What happens if this goes the other way so that they're narrow and tall? We need to check for that in our script as well. So what we've also got in our master script is we've got our edge margin, which is a parameter here, edge margin, swapped out in the master script. We've got our hole length and our hole width. 
So what I will do is I'll add a hole min here, and that will calculate which side is the narrowest side, which will be the minimum of hole length or hole width. Let's print that as well on screen. So at the moment it's 125. Good. What happens if I make the B taller than the A? Well, that doesn't help. Let's print our hole length, our hole width, and our hole min. So our hole length is 533. Our hole width is 875, so I want to choose 533. There it is. Let's change this back to 1. Have another look. 533, 125, so 125 is what it's selected. Good. So that's working. In the 3D script, the first lot of coordinates defines the outline of the prism. Then we've got our loop here, which goes to each coordinate location and puts in the coordinates for the holes. So it's within the loop here that we need to define our hole shape. So here we'll go. That should be fine. Yep. Let's check our 3D view. It's fine. Right, so that's still working. Well, we'll just put in a comment. And if you're wondering, all the commands are in capitals because we did this in ARCHICAD 26. I use capitals and all that, so this is just a continuation of that. So what we want to do now is our circle will be as big as the small side. But we still want it to draw in the center. And our coordinate, if you remember, our coord X and our coord Y will be at this corner here. For each hole. So what we want to do to account for the fact that the hole shape could be long or it could be tall and also that we are drawing our circle from the center of the hole here not from the edge we want to add half our length half our depth and this will be our center then we have our radius so hole min right that should work check script Okay, 3D view. It doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Ah, I'll wreck. Let's change this to circular. So the holes are there. You can see just that the holes are there. Let's change this to a darker material. You can see that they're there, but there's no sides to the holes. And that's because the previous coordinate line is what defines what it draws in the status codes. So if I change this, which as you loop through, it'll be the previous coordinate line, 4015. Now 15, which is here, will draw your vertical line, your top and bottom horizontal lines, and a surface. There it is, and they're all there now. And to get rid of those, we go 4015 plus 64. There's our smoothing. But the first one won't be right. So here it is, which is this status line here. That gets rid of that. And there's our holes. Let's save that. You'll notice what's happened here is we've lost our last corner. This is one of the annoying things about status codes, is that it defines the next one, but also interferes with the current one. So you have to do a bit of jiggery-pokery sometimes. So let's have a look at the problem. On the rectangular holes, we don't need to define smoothing. So I can deal with that by going 15 plus 64 multiplied by all type equals H type circular. And what that does is this is a condition which will return a one or a zero depending on whether that statement is true, which means that my 64 will either be 64 or zero, depending on whether it's whole type circular or not. Right, that returns it for that one. Well, that's good. That seems to have solved the issue, right? 
Let's have a look at my circular. Well, all of that's working, except this is gone again because it's the last coordinate line before I start defining my circular holes. Yeah, so that doesn't quite work. All right, well, let's get rid of that. Go back to what we had. So now we've got our corner back, but we've got all these lines in our first hole again. Well, that's not very helpful. So what we have to do is add in a dummy coordinate line to take care of that last status code. So what I'll do is I'll just go 0, B divided by 2, 15 plus 64, and that will put in a dummy coordinate that deals with that discrepancy we have between using a nice solid line and a smooth line. So there we go, our corners are all there. Our circles are all smoothed and we're not missing any lines. Let's have a look at our rectangular. That's working okay. Let's just change the shape, make sure it's working. Very good. Change our numbers. Very good. Well, just for kicks and giggles, let's just put in the diamond one. So we want it at the bottom in the middle, chord X plus hole length divided by 2, chord Y. Then we want it at the end, hole length, chord Y plus hole width divided by 2. Then we want it at the middle at the top. And finally, we want it at the beginning in the middle. So check our script. Script is OK. Check our 3D view. Diamond. Brilliant. Need to make sure that I close off each hole like that. There we go. There's my diamonds. Excellent. Okay, so now we just tidy up our 2D script. And we do that by just copying across our 3D script. And then changing the status codes. Good. Let's change our background pen so that we can see that we're actually cutting holes. Right on. We'll save that. Have a look in our 3D. Fantastic. Okay, doke. I'll wrap it up there. So now you know how to create different shaped holes within your prism. And more importantly, the little tricks associated with creating circular holes and making them smooth and figuring all that out. I'll see you in the next one. And go script some GDL.